Hey everybody, Lord Tremendous here. Got another battle report here for you. 2,500 point battle. Uh, battle report number 16. Tis I, Lord Tremendous of the Ogre Khans versus the Twisted Son of the Warriors of the Dark Gods. Uh, this is actually a really good game and it's going to be the last one I get against him for a while because right after this game, he went off to basic training. That's right. Uh, the Twisted Son is now the Twisted Private. That came out wrong, but I like it, so I'm going to go with it. Uh, like I said, this is actually a really good game. It's it's uh, for all the marbles, because there won't be a rematch for a while, and uh, it's excellent. So sit back, relax, and get ready to let the sultry tones of my voice guide you through this one. Real quick, uh, I did a thing. I made a Patreon, I think that's how you say it, account. Basically, if you want, this isn't mandatory or anything like that, I was watching one of Once Bitten's uh, videos where he talked about YouTubers and making money on the videos and stuff like that if people wanted, and uh, I liked the idea. So, you know, because I'm a human and I'm greedy like the rest of y'all. So. <laughs> so I looked at all the options that were available, to, uh, available and I decided that the uh, Patreon account would be my best bet. Uh, there is a link in the description, there's a link on my actual YouTube channel, there's a link on the Ninth Age page under my blog. If you want to, you do not have to, there is absolutely no obligation whatsoever. I want this to be very clear. This is something, if you feel the desire, you can leave a tip for me on there. That's it. Simple as that. It's not mandatory. Uh, I looked at some of the other ways, like going through YouTube and stuff like that, and I just didn't want to do ads on my battle reports. Uh, it's just, I don't like them. I don't like the YouTube ads, which I know is really twisted. I love YouTube. I love that they give us this forum for free, and I'm just a really bad person. But uh, if you want, if uh, for some reason you feel the need to, to donate a few bucks to me or whatever, now you have the ability. And like I said, I see it as a tip jar. Uh, nothing more than that. There are some options available to you, just like a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo or something like that, where if you donate a certain amount, I uh, will do certain things. Uh, for five bucks, uh, I'll do you know, uh, 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 like a thank you wall, but you can post anything you want, as long as it's not too inappropriate, you know what I mean? And then, of course, there's also, uh, you know, for, for you can get dice, uh, you can choose for a certain amount, I think it's, uh, I, I actually don't, I think it's like 50 bucks, you can choose for uh, a unit, any Ogre Cons unit that you want me to use for the next uh, three games or so, uh, I'll use. Uh, it could be your and, it, and it's your stipulation. You want me to have the maximum amount of scrappling unit in my army, uh, kit it out with you know hand weapon shield or whatever. Uh, okay, for the next three games that I play, I will use that unit. And uh, I know it seems like a lot for something stupid, but honestly, it's just a way for you guys, another way for you guys to interact with me. And the money is obviously going to go towards the hobby, better equipment, better uh, what's it called. Uh, battle reports and also it'll help me travel and do uh, the tournaments because right now I'm in the south region and it's a little hard for me to get to the northeast or the west or anything like that because unfortunately plane rides aren't free I'm working on that uh, and then you know it goes all the way up to the point where if uh, somebody donates enough I will actually play uh, uh, purchase and play an undying dynasties or vampire coven uh, army so just crazy stuff like that again not mandatory at all but if you feel the desire to throw a few bucks my way thank you very much if not we're still cool not a big deal just wanted to give this option out to everyone because I thought uh, once bitten's article or uh, video anyway was was very good and uh, uh, it, it struck a chord. So, yeah. So, like I said, it's up to you. No pressure. Here's my list, and I have made some changes. I still have my great shaman, Kaka Shabadu, who's still a level 3 wizard. I gave him the Beast Bane Halberd. Uh, he's got the Demon Heart, the Talisman of Greater Shielding, and the Path of Butchery. I gave him that, uh, the Beast Bane Halberd, because I want him to be strength 5. Uh, and I also was, I'm trying to incorporate more magical attacks into this army because I want it to be all comers, and I have no doubt eventually I'm going to run into something that's uh, ethereal, otherworldly, whichever one gives you the 
the uh, 204 save against Mundane Attacks. Spirit Host, Wraiths, and stuff like that. There is a Vampire Coven player in my in my group, and uh, it just started to occur to me this is something, especially if eventually I'm going to you know start running GTs or, or whatever, or going to GTs, that uh, I'm going to have to learn how to deal with. So I gave him that. That's really the only change for him, and, uh, well, I'm, I haven't decided on how, if I like it yet or not. Next up for my hero choices, I have my Khan. He's my BSB. He's still got a great weapon, Mithril Mail. Uh, the Talisman of Lesser Shielding, the Divine Icon, the Banner of Courage, and Rotten Jaw. Now, I gave him the Talisman of Lesser Shielding because instead of putting it on the Combustor where I usually had it because this guy's going to see combat more often. And I had to drop the Gemstone Amulet because I wanted to try out the Divine Icon on this guy because when he hits you with that Strength 7 hit, I want it to stick. You know, I mean, he's he's in a unit of Tribesmen now. They're only Strength 4 typically. I, I really rely on my BSB to do damage with that big, bad, great weapon. So I decided to try out uh, giving him a 6 up ward, 2 up armor, 6 up ward, and now he's got Divine uh, Attack. So when he does hit you, it hopefully will stick. Uh, also, I gave him the Banner of Courage because I don't like failing terror checks. <laughs> and uh, Rotten Jaw is, is normal, and that's just too good not to take. Next up, I have my Shaman, the Combuster. He's a level 2 wizard with Skull Splitter and the Path of Fire. Uh, he's bare naked, really. He's level 2, so I get two Path of Fire spells. He's got Skull Splitter for obvious reasons. He lost his uh, lesser... Uh, his, Talisman of Lesser Shielding, so I give it to my Khan, uh, and and that's that's it. That's this guy's job is to run around, kill chaff, be a nuisance, and uh, hopefully die with honor. Plus, I love the model. And of course, you knew I was still going to bring this guy, the most badass of the badass, uh, my Mammoth Hunter, Lord Tremendous. He still has uh, uh, the Ogre Crossbow, but I gave him the Blessed Sword, the Hardened Shield, the Gemma Dragonfire, the Troll Leader Big Name, and Tusker. And he's still on Tusker. Uh, I gave him the Blessed Sword for the same reason my Khan has it. I like the idea of being able to re-roll... Well, that's not the reason my BSV has it. I like uh, the idea of you having to re-roll your ward saves if, uh, you know, he hits you, because I need his wounds to wound. And uh, the idea of being able to re-roll my failed to wounds for 20 points and their magical attacks? Hell yeah. Uh, I gave him the Hardened Shield, duh, I like the 2-up armor save. The Gem of Dragonfire, however, I gave him for obvious reasons. He now has Troll Eater, which gives him uh, Stupidity, which at Leadership 9, I'm not too concerned about. I figure the way I run this guy, he's out of combat at, at worst, three rounds of combat. So I have to take three Leadership 9 uh, Stupidity checks a game with him. At, at, you know, on average, we'll say, we'll say. So, you know, my math isn't great, but at the same time, he's, he's got the five up regen from it, and the gem uh, dragon fire makes it so that if he doesn't get his five up, he gets a two up, which means anything with flaming attacks now is pretty much his. I can send him in there and not have to worry about anything. So that'd be great if I ever run into Infernal Dwarves or anyone with a standard of flame or whatever, and I'm, I'm golden, hopefully, allegedly, that's the idea. Uh, and also, of course, uh, Troll Leader gives you uh, multiple wounds too against monstrous infantry, which uh, if and when I run into trolls, other ogres, or any, mon you know, uh, uh, what is it, vermin hulks and stuff like that, anytime I run into monstrous infantry, he's going to make them his... Uh, well, female dog in heat. We'll say it that way. <laughs> now we're into my core, and of course I have my 7 by tribesmen, the good old boys. That's right, I've named my units. Uh, they've got Banner Musician, Iron Fist, and Heavy Armor. So other than the, I've, the fact that I've named my units now, there's really no change to this particular one. Next up, I have my unit of five tribesmen, the Inner Council, because that's where my great shaman Kaka Shabadoo goes. They have the Banner, Musician, Iron Fist, Heavy Armor, and the Banner of Discipline. Because they're Inner Council, they have Discipline. Last but not least, shoring up my core, I have my four bruisers, the dour ones, and they are butt naked, and uh, every art, every almost every game, they, they actually come very useful, so I'm pleased with this unit. 
Here's a little bit of a change in my special choices. I took uh, minimal unit of Yetis. Uh, I'm proxying them. I will point them out. I wanted to try them out. I know it's a minimal unit. I know people say you need bigger ones than what I'm taking of just two, but it's it's points that I had left over. I wanted to try something new, and so I'm just giving a couple of them a shot. I'm not even sure if I want to use them, but I figure I'd give them a shot. You know what I mean? Next up, I have a unit of six Scrappling Trappers, the favored pets. Uh, I just added one to this unit because I had to drop the other one in order to make the points all work out. However, I am very pleased to have the sixth one, and I know this is a picture of only five. Uh, the sixth one's in stealth. Uh, yeah, it's just he's very hidden. What can I tell you? And then I have these bad boys, my six by mercenary veterans, the storms of retribution. You know, just the retribution, the stormcast thing. I thought it was clever. If it's not, I apologize. They still have the same kit out though: a banner musician, iron fist, lethal strike, thunderous charge, and of course they have the banner of speed. I have been toying, and I have not decided yet, with swapping out uh, thunderous charge with poisoned attacks. And number one, the reason I haven't done it yet is because I love being plus one strength on the charge. That's awesome. However, even though they're strength five and they're usually wounding most things on twos or threes, I think with the amount of attacks I'm throwing, those sixes, you know, that could be really, really useful. I like uh, lethal strike, so that's another thing that stopped me. For every six that I roll to hit, it's a six I'm not rolling to wound. So it's this weird balancing act thing I'm trying to do. I'm toying with the idea, though, and I don't know why I'm babbling to you about it because I didn't do it in this game, but hey, now you know what's going on in my silly little head. And then, of course, you know I'm not leaving home without my kin, either, Lady Elizabeth. And yeah, she's too awesome not to bring. And then, just because I missed him, I, for my rare choices, I brought back my slave giant. I wanted to give him another shot. Uh... I didn't dislike him before, I had to drop him in order to fit some points around where I wanted to, but I wanted to bring him back, give him another shot. And of course, the best damn model in my whole damn army, my frost mammoth, Rufus! Ah, oh, he's got two ogre crossbows on the riders, but who cares, he's Rufus. God, I love this guy. So that's going to be it. That's my army list and stuff right now uh, and the changes I've made. Uh, I'm going to go through my opponent's army. I'm just going to play some music and uh, zip through it. Feel free to pause it anytime if you want to see what he took. So here are my spells, which are exactly what you're looking at. Notice the cards, I finished painting them. Yay! And here are my opponent's spells. Uh, I think this is what his, obviously what his uh, wizard master took. And here's what his little level 2 wizard apprentice took. Here's deployment, and it's, uh, well, 
it's it's a little crazy. Uh, for the most part, I I just kind of threw all my stuff down. I, I like to go first. I put my giant and Lord Tremendous on the left flank there. Their job was to go through and just deal with whatever little chaff crap and stuff he may have put and just get into combat together as quick as they could. I was hoping if he had any shooting, although it's Warriors of Dark Gods, what were the odds of that, that he would go after Lord Tremendous. But this guy's played me a lot, so he knows to go after the giant. Just an idea. Uh, my combustor, it's hard to see, but he's in the ruins on my left flank there, and he's going to try to deal with whatever he threw over here. I figured he'd throw some sort of chaff over there, and I was right. He's got barbarian horsemen right across from me, as well as some dogs. Of course, I have my big bricks in the middle there. Uh, the the veterans of my channel will recognize War Kitty in the middle. He is my proxy for my... Uh, uh, Frost Mammoth Rufus because Rufus was be is at home uh, being painted during this game. So yes, next time you see Rufus, he will have a very nice paint job. Uh, I got you know obviously the tribesmen and my merc vets in the middle there getting ready to just lay down the law. And then on the right side there, I've got my bruisers and their job is to just chaff up all that stuff on my right flank. As you can see, he's got like his crushers and his knights over there. If I can sacrifice my 144 point unit of bruisers to take those units out of the game awesome i've also got my yetis over there because i planned on using them as a chaff unit and i figured why not here's my opponent's right flank uh from left to right unit of barbarian horsemen another unit of barbarian horsemen and at the bottom ish of the picture maybe center are a unit of warhounds Here's my opponent's center. From left to right, those are his chosen, and I believe his general and BSB are in there. I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, in the back is his sorcerer lord on a mana core. Next to him are some fallen. In front of them are wasteland warriors. And then his left flank consists of his knights and his crushers. Here's my right flank, which up front there is my proxy unit of yetis, and behind them are my bruisers. Here's my center. From right to left, there's my merc vets, my tribesmen with Kakash Shabadu. There's my war kitty slash frost mammoth for this game. In the forest there are my trappers, and I think it's pretty obvious why I put them there. And on the left there is my BSB with my big unit of tribesmen. The good old boys. And on my left flank, from right to left, I got Lord Tremendous, I got my Slave Giant, and I got the Combustor. Here's top of one after movement, and like I said, I got to go first. Everything comes forward. Only the Combustor moved up six inches, and his job was to take care of the, uh, what's it called? War Beasts, the little guys in the middle there. I was just going to have him try to get rid of those guys. Everything else comes forward with the exception of my trappers in the middle because I didn't feel like being charged. I figured if the Chosen got ballsy and tried to charge them, they would flee. They're insignificant, so they're not going to bother anything they run through. Uh, the Yetis moved up kind of aggressive because I don't know what the hell to do with Yetis. I figure if someone charges them, I'm just going to flee. And, uh, yeah, I might have my uh, 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 Merc Vets flee because of that, but, I mean... It, it's, a, it's a risk I'm willing to take. I got my Leadership 9 general bubble going around. Uh, I don't think they're within 12 of the BSB, but who cares. But yeah, like I said, everything shoots forward. Daring these warriors to come at me, bro. During the magic phase, I get... I want to say... Uh, what's it called? Burning Ramparts off or something like that on the, on the War Dogs. And then with Raging Fire, I'm able to kill two. I'm also able to get regen off on my Merc Vets, and that was just in case, you know what I mean? Better safe than sorry. Also over here, I got plus one toughness off on my good old boys with my BSB, just, like I said, just in case. Plus, it's always nice to have plus two toughness on your general. I'm sorry, it was Cascading Fire that I got off on these guys, and it was the lore attribute for lore, or Path of Fire that allowed me to kill two of the dogs. So at the end of the phase, per the spell, I got uh, the unit suffered another D6 strength 4 hits, or a D6 strength 4 hits, and I killed one more, which forced the panic check. And by removing that one last guy, he was out of the bubble of his lord, they break and they flee, which is uh, which is good. It's, it's not going to, like, win me the game or anything like that, but it's one less unit of chaff I have to worry about. After a pretty successful top of turn one, we go over here to bottom of one after movement, and he more or less ignores me. He passes all his frenzy checks and everything like that, and uh, comes forward kind of conservatively. Uh, his crushers moved f the fastest, and I was perfectly fine with that because my bruisers were supposed to chaff that unit. I didn't want that unit getting into anything meatier than my bruisers. Uh, he ignores my yetis, which uh, shocked me a little bit, I won't lie, but I think he saw through my BS. Uh, his chosen, everybody ignores 
ignored my trappers in the forest and instead everything kind of comes forward on my left flank there the barbarian horsemen came up fast they want my caster i'm not going to give it to him i'm going to move him out of the way and then uh blast him with magic and the skull splitter hopefully uh other than that though his dogs rallied and uh that's it for his movement phase during his magic phase, I don't remember what spell he got off, but that little bastard back there uh, on the manacore, I think, cast a spell at my trappers and killed two of them. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, they did make their panic check because my general was right there. And then he gets, uh, I think, the D3 toughness spell off on the Chosen, or maybe it's just a plus one toughness on the Chosen, which is perfectly fine. I let this one go because I had no intention of messing with the Chosen, and uh, he used a lore attribute to buff his Manticore uh, Riding Sorcerer Lord with uh, plus one toughness as well. At the end of his magic phase, since he didn't dispel it, Cascading Fire goes off again, and I only do one hit, but it wounds and it kills the dog, which is cool. And it forces the panic check, which he fails, and then he flees off the table, which was uh, poetic justice, I guess, or, or very helpful. Either way, I was pleased. With that over, we go over here to top of two after movement, and there's some. My mercenary vets, I get the bright idea, uh, and this is why I should never be thinking. I charge my yetis at his wasteland warriors to get them out of the way so that my mercenary vets can charge his crushers. This is where I should have ended all thinking and just been happy. For some reason, and I'm still not sure why I did it, I charged my bruisers into the crushers as well. Yeah, I know. Uh, sometimes sitting on my shoulders is just the best way, I guess. I, I, I'm really unsure of why I did that. Uh, they make it, as you can see, and it's at this point I realize what an idiot I am. So I take my general out of the unit of tribesmen that he's in to move over there to try to buff my bruisers if I can to survive this combat because they are going to give away so much free combat res, it's disgusting. I cannot believe I did that. Uh, but hey, never claim to be smart. Uh, the rest of my guys move up towards the center because I'm getting ready to try to get a favorable charge on the Chosen. Uh, on the left flank there the combustor moves away so that he can't be charged and I pull my giant over to the left flank to get in the way of the uh, barbarian horsemen so they can't uh, charge my, my shaman and kill off the combustor before I'm ready to sacrifice him that's pretty much it for movement there's a better picture of just how stupid I am. <laughs> I don't even know I did this. The Mercs had this. And uh, yeah, sending the bruises in was really, really stupid. And there's a better picture of the Yeti slamming into these guys. Now, I know this is unfair to the Yetis. I had to get them out of the way so that my mercenary vets could hit the crushers because I wasn't going to have a better uh, charge at them than that. But like an idiot, I completely forgot my original plan. I should have just let the Crushers take the Bruisers. I got excited. I was like, ooh, a flank charge on Crushers with my Merc Vets. Why, why, why could I pass that up? So unfortunately, the Yetis are, I get a bum deal in the first game I've ever tried with them. But there it is. There's a better picture of it. During the magic phase, I get the big bone crusher off on the knights because I was worried I couldn't get my damn buff spell off like I wanted. So, because he dispelled it with a scroll and then his dice. So I was mad and I was like, you know, I got some dice left. I'm going to throw the big bone crusher at his knights and maybe mess him up. And I did. <laughs> I killed four of them, which was beautiful. What's not beautiful is that I ended up miscasting 8 in order to do this. The resulting miscast ends up doing a wound to Kaka, as well as a wound to uh, my combustor, or the combustor, who unfortunately has no idea why he's bleeding from the eyes right now. During the shooting phase, the combustor uses Skull Splitter to pop one Barbarian Horseman, which isn't bad. And then Lord Tremendous fires his own personal crossbow at the uh, Sorcerer Lord and wounds him. The Frost Mammoth, also Rufus, he fired his crossbows at him as well, but missed. Lord Tremendous is a sniper, though. So we go into combat, and things here go from bad to worse. My bruisers... I, I, well, first of all, I flub. Plain, simple, and to the point, I flub. Uh, my mercenary vets, unfortunately, don't do any lethal strikes whatsoever. And uh, would have won combat just fine with charge, flank, super flank, banner. Would have been gorgeous. Would have been beautiful. Would have been a winner. 
Unfortunately, I only did three wounds. My bruisers didn't do anything except for take eight wounds. <laughs> I lose this combat. My, uh, yeah, yeah, I lose this combat. And as you can see, the mercenary vets, since they're steadfast, they made their break check no problem. However, the bruisers, due to my incredible tactical acumen, uh, they were not, and they auto-broke, basically. Uh, they, they didn't make their break check. They fled, and they are literally like a quarter of an inch away from the board edge. I stopped literally right there. You can see I'm not off the board, but I'm right next to it. <laughs> so, damn it. This is completely my fault, and my mercenaries are now screwed. And then over here, the Yetis, I never had any high hopes for this one. They were able to kill two of these guys, mostly due to the fact that they had paired weapons and uh, negative one to the initiative of these guys. But I was only able to kill two of them. Never got my stomps because this unit just eviscerated both the Yetis before they could do anything. Wasn't their fault. This is not a fair test of the Yetis. Unfortunately, I sacrificed them to sacrifice my Merc Vets and my Bruisers because I'm terrible at this game. <laughs> So we go over here to uh, bottom of two after movement, and his Chosen finally do try to charge my scrap, uh, Scrappling Trappers, and they're not having any of that, so they flee, uh, and they get away. He wasn't able to. He tried to redirect, I think, into my Tribesman, and he ended up rolling like a three for his charge, so he might not even made it into the Trappers, to be honest, but, you know, hindsight. There's no way I could know that. However, his Wasteland Warriors slam into the flank of my Merc Vets, and that's really, really bad. Uh, his one remaining knight goes after my uh, lord, and I totally get that. Uh, and the rest of his army just kind of moves. I was fallen. His manacore, they move up into that little gap there. The barbarian horsemen, they run on the outside of the hill there, so they can't be magicked or shot to death. And the other ones try to go around my slave giant, because they don't want to be charged by him any more than I want to be charged by them. That's about it. There's a better picture of his Wasteland Warriors slamming into the flank of my Merc Vets, and oh, I had this coming. And there's a better picture of my Trappers running in terror from the Chosen, and rightfully so. During his magic phase, he gets the uh, D3 toughness spell off on his Chosen, and he gets all three toughness, which is fine. I'm not going to charge his unit next turn. And then he puts the lore attribute uh, toughness on his uh, Managor Rider once again. However, in order to do that, he had to uh, overwhelming power it. I did try to stop it, uh, but I wasn't able to, obviously. So he ends up miscasting six, I believe. The ensuing miscast, of course, adds a wound to his character and ends his magic phase because all his power dice that he had left were thrown away. So we go into combat, and my mercenary vets tried really, really hard. They were able to kill five of the Wasteland Warriors, and that was just with ten attacks. I was quite pleased with that. However, uh, the ones in front couldn't get a single wound through on the Crushers. My opponent made all of his armor saves, and I didn't run. I didn't roll one lethal strike. Not one. Which, uh, I'm not going to lie, breaks my heart quite a bit. So I lose this combat by a ton, and I break. Uh, both units pursue, but luckily I'm able to get away. I roll high enough that I get away. Uh, well, I roll higher than my opponent. Uh, I did lose another guy because that uh, terrain right there, we were using it as impassable terrain, so I took a whole bunch of dangerous terrain checks. I take three wounds from it and lose another guy. Uh, the Crushers and the Wasteland Warriors end up exactly where you see them, as well as my Mercenary Vets. So with that over, we go over to the top of three after movement, and my bruisers rally, my mercenary vets do not, and they run off the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't uh, blame them for that at all. I'm not mad. I set them up for failure. I would have ran out on myself after something like that. I was very upset with myself with that. But well done on my opponent for taking advantage of my stupidity. Uh, my giant passes his leadership check to March, and he comes running back towards the middle of the table because I realize I'm quickly losing this game. Uh, my com uh, the, the combustor, he moves over to take some shots at the barbarian horsemen to try to take them out before they can become a threat. And everybody else just kind of postures a little bit uh, in order to try to deal with the mess I've left myself. It went from looking really good to really bad really quick. Also, my uh, trappers rally on their own leadership, so that's a bonus.
Oh, and in the middle there, I put my tribes moon up into the trees there. Uh, that way, if anybody charges me, I think that they have to take dangerous terrain checks. I did not remember that the uh, Chosen have the Stalker standard, which means they have Strider, which means they don't have to worry about the dangerous terrain checks for the forest because they don't take them because they have Strider. So the forest won't cause DT to them, which sucks, but what can you do? Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for my movement. During the magic phase, I get Fireball off on the Barbarian Horseman over here, and I'm able to kill two of them, I believe, with Fireball and Raging Fire. However, I'm rolling hot, and uh, I end up miscasting ten uh, in order to get that Fireball spell off. I only lose one level because I threw three dice at the spell, and the spell I lose is Fireball because it's the spell that you cast, unfortunately. So I've still got Cascading Fire, but... Yeah, I lost Fireball, and that, that really, really hurts. However, uh, the Combustor, never one to disappoint, uh, pulls out his Skull Splitter and is able to shoot the last three Barbarian Horsemen off the table. Murders all three of them. No panic check required. That is all the fail I could do at the top of three, so we go over here to bottom of three after movement. And uh, I'm in trouble. The Crushers charge into the Bruisers, who stand and take it because, well, let's face it, they earned it. The Chosen charge my uh, Tribesmen, who flee because at this point I realize he's got Swift Stride. I ask him why he has it. He's got the Stalker Standard. I go, oh yeah, flee. <laughs> so, well, he picked up three dice. He hadn't rolled them yet or anything. And uh, we did it all legally. Calm down. Uh, uh, his Fallen and his Wasteland Warriors kind of move over towards the center there, and his other unit of uh, Barbarian Horsemen turn around. They don't want to come over the hill because they don't want to get shot and magicked, but they do start moving towards the center as well. And his Sorcerer Lord, he, I think when he moved him back there on the Manicor, he thought he was out of the charge arc of Lord Tremendous. Uh, but from my angle, on my side of the table, I could see he wasn't, so I was really excited about that. Uh, I was going to send Lord Tremendous into the flank of the Chosen, but I cannot pass up that beautiful charge into his uh, Mana Core guys. So that was it for movement. There's a better picture of my tribesmen fleeing away from the Chosen, and since my trappers were in the forest, it counts as dangerous terrain for these bad boys. They took a bunch of dangerous terrain checks, and uh, I, I lost one, as you can see, as well as some carrying a wound. So... <laughs> Damn! And there's a better picture of the premeditated murder that is the Crushers into my Bruisers. Ah, oh, which was my original plan. Oh, I'm an idiot. Nothing happens in magic shooting, so we go straight into combat, and lo and behold, the Crushers are able to rip apart my Bruisers before they can do anything, and it's sad. So we go here to top of four after movement, and I'm a little panicked. Um... My Lord Tremendous is able to charge into his Manticore and uh, make the charge, which is awesome. And my opponent was like, oh, I didn't realize you were in my... I was still in your line of sight. I was like, just... Yeah, I was. And we, there, as you can see, the arc in the top right there. We did check. Uh, my trappers move up eight inches back into the forest. Again, I'm under the impression that people have to take dangerous terrain checks, or the Chosen Will anyway, and that's my fault. My uh, combustor moves over because I'm going to start paying a whole lot of attention to the Chosen to try to lower their numbers. Even the Giant, you know, moves up slightly. Actually, I think the Giant tried to charge the Chosen in the flank and failed. Uh, and that's just poor dice rolling on my part. So right now, my big concern is surrounding the Chosen and trying to take off as many uh, from, his, from his tray as possible before I'm forced to face them in close combat. There's a better picture of Lord Tremendous slamming into his Sorcerer Lord, and that is hopefully going to go my way. And there's a better picture of my Giant failing a charge into the Chosen. Now, I didn't expect the Giant to do a lot of damage to the Chosen, but what I was hoping is that uh, he could at least hold him there and force flank charges and all that other good stuff. Hopefully, maybe, but we'll never know, because he's apparently a stumbling slow Giant. During the magic phase, I get Bone Crusher off on that one remaining knight and kill him, which is absolutely fantastic. So we go into combat over here, and <laughs> uh, we both flub. I, I shouldn't say we both flub. We both actually roll spectacularly, uh, both to hit, to wound, and all of our saves. So, <laughs> yeah. Even with the blessed sword and him having to re-roll everything, we make all of our saves on both ends. The Manicor and him and the Lord Tremendous. I make my saves, Lord Tremendous and the Tusker into him. He makes all his saves. It's a monstrous beast, so he gets ward and everything like that because it's only monsters calf, which makes Manicor's flippin' awesome. 
But yeah, I win by one because I charged. <laughs> and it works. He actually broke. <laughs> the music makes sense now. Huh? I know what you're thinking. Why the hell is he playing the music? This is awful. So yeah, he breaks and he rolls like 10 inches to get away. I pursue because I'm not letting him get away. I want him off the board. I want him dead. I want those points. And he goes off the table. I chase. I go off the table. So Lord Tremendous is able to defeat the Sorcerer Lord on a Manticore because he charged him. <laughs> God, I love that model. So after that, we go over here to bottom of four after movement and is chosen charge into my trappers. I'm like, stand and shoot because he's going into the forest. He's going to take a whole bunch of dangerous terrain checks and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully a bunch of these guys die. Nope. I forgot again that he had the stalker standard and that uh, he didn't have to worry about it. Stupid on my part. So I stood, I shot, and then he's like, I'm like, dangerous trains. He's like, we have Strider. I'm like, motherless, stupid Bill. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> he made it in. No problem, which means he's going to kill my trappers and then overrun into my tribesmen, and I'm screwed. Uh, meanwhile, his fallen more or less stay right where they are. His wasteland warriors move up slightly, and as you can see, his barbarian horsemen come up onto the hill. Uh, his crushers, who uh, had to overrun because they're frenzied, went over, uh, went off the table. They came back onto the table this round and just kind of started moving around on the right flank. I'll be perfectly honest; you're not going to see anything else from the rest of the game. There's a better picture of my opponent outsmarting me, and uh, he did it quite well. During the magic phase, uh, the little crazy bastard up top there, he does something. I don't remember what spell it is, but he's able to kill a base outright with uh, whatever damage he does. But uh, he ends up doing it with overwhelming power, and he miscasts four, which is kind of huge. I'm not even going to lie to you, because he threw four dice at that spell to get it off. <laughs> So he might have just nuked his character. Well, I've never been a good suspense guy. He does. He nukes his character. He ends up destroying him. He rolls uh, four or something like that or whatever he had to roll in order to kill him off. He kills off three or four fallen. And, uh, well, that's the end of his magic phase. So another lucky break for me. We go into combat, and uh, if you can believe it, the Chosen eviscerate all of my trappers. I was stunned. I mean, with their weapon skill and toughness and humongous no armor save, I figured they had it. And then, of course, they overrun into my tribesmen, and they're just screwed. So here we are in top of five after movement, and... I couldn't charge with the whole unit of tribesmen into the Chosen. I just felt like that was a bad idea. So I charged my BSB into him, figuring why not. I also charged my giant into him, and again, the slow, stupid bastard fails his damn charge. Ah, oh, it's frustrating. So with that being said, I, I moved the, uh, what's it called? I moved my Frost Mammoth back, which I shouldn't have done. I should have brought him forward more. Uh, Elizabeth shows up. She showed up last turn because it was rolling kind of low to bring her on. She's just trying to get into this fight somehow. She came over on the left side to deal with the uh, Barbarian Horseman, but then the Combustor killed him. It was that turn she came on. Uh, and, and yeah, the Combustor moves up on the hill to try to destroy the Barbarian Horseman before they can countercharge my Giant or something and get points there. Lord Tremendous comes back on the table and shoots towards the center to try to get back into this fight, but man, I really need that Giant to make that charge. I am so screwed. There's a better picture of me sacrificing my tribesmen and my BSB to the meat grinder that is known as the Chosen. And there's a better picture of the scumbag known as Gosh put me back on the shelf to collect dust uh, giant failing his charge for the second friggin time during the magic phase I get cascading fire off on these guys because it's all I've got and with raging fire I'm able to do one wound to the unit and then we go into combat and it does not go well as you can see I have one tribesman left with a wound left on him and I was able to kill three chosen I don't think anything happens to my BSB I think he gets into combat with his general or his BSB or something like that and nothing happens we just you know uh, butterfly kiss each other to death however I lose his combat by a metric crap ton 
and I get away. He goes after my tribesmen, believe it or not, and the tribesmen get away, the BSB gets away, and that's where we all end up in the end. So I have a chance, but it's his turn next. So here we are at bottom of five after movement, and the Fallen run up to go and threaten Lord Tremendous, and I, I don't fully understand that one. Uh, his Chosen, of course, charge my BSB, who flees, and then he redirects into the Tribesmen, uh, who flee off the table, and the Chosen are right behind him. They end up charging off the table, too. He rolled really high. Uh, the Barbarian Horseman on the hill charged down the hill and hit my uh, giant from behind, which sucks. And uh, his Wasteland Warriors and his Crushers come around and try to get into the middle. That's about it. There's a better picture of my BSB getting away and his Chosen getting a hold of my Tribesmen, which I think probably got him more points. And there's a better picture of his... Uh, Barbarian horsemen slamming into the rear of my giant, and I'm kind of rooting for the barbarians at this point. So we go into the combat phase because there's no magic or shooting, and believe it or not, the giant obliterates <laughs> the barbarian horseman. Uh, he does take three wounds for his trouble, but yeah, he's able to take them all out in combat, no problem. Not combat res, just pure unadulterated hate. Uh, maybe he knew how upset I was with him. I don't know, but uh, he really pulled it off there and, and secured those points for me. I reposition him to look up at the Fallen and just attempt a long-distance charge. That was, that was cool. I'm not as disgusted with him anymore. And with that said and done, we go over to top of six after movement. Uh, not a ton. My giant does try to charge a fallen and fail. I actually, I don't think he does try to charge him. I think he just kind of moves towards them. I think it was an impossible charge, therefore illegal. Uh, Lord Tremendous turns to face the fallen in case they want a piece of daddy. And everything else just kind of moves around slightly because there's really nothing else I'm going to be able to do. Oh no, I did, I did, I did try to charge with the giant and failed. So that's three failed charges, although I'm not going to fault him for this one because this was probably needing an 11 or 12 to make it. So we're good here, giant, but you're lucky you got the damn barbarian horseman. During the magic phase, I got Bone Crusher off on the Wasteland Warriors. Uh, why not, right? And I was able to kill, I think, two of them, maybe three, which is pretty decent, but not enough to really do anything but maybe get me half points. I can't remember how many they started off with. And then in the shooting phase, Lord Tremendous fires his uh, Ogre Bolt Thrower, in, or I'm sorry, Crossbow into him and actually kills a guy. Even with them being skirmishers, I was able to kill one with him, so that's outstanding. So at this point, I mean, it's the end of the game. My opponent uh, isn't going to charge with his Fallen into uh, Lord Tremendous because he's not stupid. His Wasteland Warriors and his Crushers aren't going to be able to charge anything, so there's no point in moving them. And his Chosen come back on the table and can't charge anything. So there it is, everybody. There's the end of the game. And uh, it's actually pretty close at this point. I still have a lot on the table. He still has a lot on the table. So we're both kind of like, I wonder who won. And uh, what a knockout, dragout fight. I made a lot, a lot of stupid mistakes in this game. And uh, my opponent was there to capitalize on every single one. But you know what? I'm going to take a break and get a drink. And uh, then we'll go over the recap. Captain Picard, tell him what to do. Make it so. So in the end, it was a victory for Lord Tremendous. I was as shocked as you are. Uh, I ended up getting 1,347 out of him. He ended up getting 1,040 out of me for a difference of 299. I ended up losing uh, my banner from my BSB, although my con survived. He's against points for the banner. I lost my inner circle tribesmen, my bruisers, my trappers, my yetis, and my mercenary vets. It was crazy, and the actual fact that I that I somehow pulled out a victory by the skin of my teeth is uh, pretty much par for the course for me. If I win, it's by a very, very thin margin. <laughs> Lord Tremendous was definitely my MVP for this game with the kill on the Sorcerer Lord on a Mana Core. That was huge. Uh, but yes, as I've said already, I, I had a lot of bad decisions this game. It was piss poor for me to send my Bruisers into the Crushers. My Mercenaries would have been able to take them no problem, turn around and maybe take care of the Knights, get into the Wasteland Warriors, do anything except for die. Especially considering my original plan was to sacrifice my Bruisers into the crushers to just take them out of the game. How stupid was that? Ugh, unbelievable. 
And then, of course, being outplayed by my opponent with the trappers and his Strider banner and stuff. That was genius on his point. But what can you do? But yeah, I've said it once, I'll say it again. Chosen are literal meat grinders. I, I'm scared to death of that unit. I love the unit, but I'm scared to death of it. And if you can avoid it in close combat, avoid it at all costs. Uh, my, his little caster uh, miscasting and taking himself off the table was huge. I think game-changing. Had that little bastard still been around uh, for the next couple of turns, I do believe the game would have gone uh, my opponent's way. Very, very much so. And uh, speaking of magic, the Bone Crusher spell is quickly becoming one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, taking out the knights, doing some damage to the Wasteland Warriors. When it comes to Kraken armor, that is the spell I hope I roll every time. As always, though, this was really a fantastic game. I really like it. It was a super tough challenge. This opponent is getting amazingly good, and I'm still mind blown that I actually pulled out the victory. Like I said, fantastic opponent, and dude, I know you're not going to hear this until months after you're back, but <laughs> good luck in basic training, bud. I know you can do it. Uh, and you know what? When he gets back, I'm definitely looking forward to the rematch, unless he's too cool to hang out with me. And, uh, well, who wouldn't understand that, right? <laughs> well, that's it, guys. This battle report is officially in the record books. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Uh, if you enjoyed it a lot and you're still not into the Ninth Age, what in God's name is wrong with you? Go to the Ninth Age forums, get the book, get the rules, get, check out all the armies, it's all free, and get into this game before we all pass you by waving our butt cheeks at you. You don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. But damn it, it's for your own good if I have to do it. Uh, see the description, uh, see my description for all the important links. Uh, if you want to donate, like, into my tip jar, there's links on my channel. There'll be links in the description. And if you don't, that's cool, too. Just know that every time you don't, somewhere, somehow, a, a scrapling dies. And uh, if you can live with that, well, I don't want to be you. Just saying. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comments section below, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. But, yeah, guys, thanks. Thanks.